Hey guys, <clears throat> welcome back. We are going to start 2012 out with something interesting. Heart blocks. Continuing on with our EKGs, we are going to talk about our AV nodal blocks. And there's four of them that we have to worry about. And this first one here is a first degree AV block. And they go up in sequence from, we're going to say, uh, less severe to most severe. So we have a first degree block our second degree type 1, second degree type 2s, and then our third degree block. <clears throat> Let's look at our first degree block here. Here's a blown up picture, and this uh, looks like an otherwise normal sinus rhythm. We have a nice R to R interval, we have a nice P to P interval, T wave, nice upright rounded P, our QRS complex is within normal duration, but there's one abnormality that we see here, and that is our P to Q. Uh, distance here. We call that our PRI, our PR interval. Now normally our PR interval should be between 0.12 and 0.20 seconds. This one it's very prolonged and it's prolonged throughout the entire EKG. There's no fluctuation. This is a regular rhythm. The only thing abnormal in this rhythm is my PRI. <clears throat> if I have my PRI that's uh, greater than 0.20 seconds throughout the EKG, I can call that a first degree heart block. And don't forget when you're diagnosing these things, you have to diagnose it as a sinus rhythm with a first degree AV block. All right. That's our first degree AV block there. And we go to our next highest up in severity heart block. So our second degree type one blocks, we can call this one winky block. That's the other name for it. When we look at it, and the first thing we notice right off the bat is that my R to R interval is not regular, like our first degree heart block was. We had a regular R to R interval, but on here we don't. I see P waves, I see T waves, but what characterizes this heart block is a progressively prolonging PRI. And here we can see it's borderline long, gets longer, gets longer, and then you have a dropped QRS complex. Now, this is the classic long, longer, longer drop. Long, longer, longer drop. It doesn't have to be like that. It could be long, longer drop. Long, longer drop. It could be in any type of pattern. But here we see right here is our area where we have a dropped QRS complex, just like we have a dropped QRS complex here. All right. So we have a borderline long, longer, longer drop, as opposed to a very regular prolongation of the PRI. Here we have a intervaling um, prolongation of our PRI until we have a dropped QRS complex, and that's our second degree type 1s. Then we have our second degree type 2s. Now here, the first thing we notice right off the bat is our R to R's aren't uh, regular like our first degree heart block was. Our R to R intervals kind of look like our second degree type 1, but there's one little difference. We have a drop QRS complex here and here. There's no um, slow progressing of prolonging PRIs like we had in our second degree type 1s, how I'm going to show you right there. Our second degree type 1s, we had long, longer, longer drop. And if you could see it over here, it would be long, longer, longer drop. Here, there is no long, longer, longer drop. We just have a dropped QRS complex. And another thing is, is that if you were to walk out your P to P intervals, they would be normal. All right? They would be normal. But where you would expect a QRS complex to be, it's missing. You would expect a QRS complex to be right there. You would expect a QRS complex to be there. And if they were there, it would be regular. So your second degree type 2s would be an area where you have more P waves than QRS complexes, like in this area here. You have two P waves, one QRS complex. A drop QRS complex here, you have two P waves. And over there, where you can't see in this rhythm, is your QRS complex. Then on to our final one, we have our third degree or complete AV block. Now, as opposed to our second degree type 2s, 
our P to P's are normal. Our P to P intervals will walk out, just like our R to R intervals will walk out. All right, they're even. This is a regular rhythm when you're talking about R to R intervals and P to P intervals. The problem with the third degree heart block, though, is that the P waves and the QRS complexes don't have any relationship with each other. You essentially have an atrium that's firing completely separate from the ventricles firing. They're doing their own thing. So I'm going to have a nice normal R to R interval and a P to P interval. These P's are um, moved all over this isoelectric line. I have two here two here they're kind of randomly placed all around your isoelectric line and that's your third degree heart block differentiating it between your area of dropped QRS complexes as opposed to a moving around P to P interval like your third degree heart block and here you have a P wave uh, about one and a third large box away from your T wave just like you do here that's normal this distance from this P wave to this T wave is the same as the distance between that P wave and that T wave. As opposed to your third degree heart block, your P's are all over the place. There's no correlation between the two. It's complete AV disassociation. <clears throat> so let's look at a video of our second, or I'm sorry, our first degree heart block. And you can see it. If you look at this, we have a nice R to R interval. Our P to P intervals are normal. We just have a long PRI right there. You see that? This is sinus rhythm with first degree AV block. Now let's look at our second degree type 1s. All right. Well, let's look at what we got. Long, longer, longer. That dropped. Normal, longer, longer, drop. Normal, longer, longer, drop. This is a classic second degree type 1 Wenke Bach type heart block. Right there in a nice pattern. All right. Normal, long, longer. That one dropped. Normal, long, or that's normal, longer, drop. Progressively prolonging PRI. All right, let's look at this bad boy. We have a P. No QRS complex. Again, P, no QRS complex. Seems pretty regular. You would expect a QRS complex right there, and if it was, it would be normal. Let's look. P, no QRS. P, QRS. P, QRS. P, QRS. No QRS. That is a second degree type 2 block. I'll let it run for a little while so you guys can, can get a good look at it and see it. Right there. Every third complex drops. Now let's look at the big boy. Our complete heart block. Look how this P wave moves across the isoelectric line. You can really see it. it moves back. Look at it again. See my arrow pointer there? It's not in the same spot back some more this P waves your P waves in correlation to your QRS complex are all over the place there's no correlation you have an atrium firing completely independent from your ventricular depolarization and your P waves are all over the place normally going to be bradycardic probably going to be Y complex because this is an infranodal block and though your P waves there are, are uh, all over the place on your isoelectric line let it run for a little while so you guys can see it. All right. Well, those are our four heart blocks. Learn them. Study them. What are the three ways to get to Carnegie Hall, they say? Practice, practice, practice. Our first degree AV block, second degree type 1, second degree type 2, and third degree block. Have a happy new year, guys.